11 weeks after Pearl Harbor, Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, which essentially said that the Army had a right to exclude anybody from a area that they considered a military zone. Unfortunately, the entire West Coast was deemed a military zone. And by May of 42, they started a wholesale evacuation of the ethnic Japanese living on the West Coast. This is the site of the oldest Japanese language school in San Francisco. This became one of the places where the, all the Japanese came to be registered. So the military knew exactly how many in the family and how many people would be leaving the area. Dorothea Lang was hired by the government to photograph and record the history. She captures the agony that the people were going through. Many of her photos were impounded by the government because they appeared to be too sympathetic of what was happening to these Americans of Japanese ancestry. 120,000 of them were sent to internment camps. Two-thirds of the people were born in the U.S. They were American citizens. They were each issued a manila tag that had their name, their locations of their camp, and each family had their own serial number issued by the U.S. government. For my project, I was able to order new tags made in the same dimension. I had a database from the National Archive that was probably about that high. I had volunteers write them and stamp them and tie them. We created 120,000 tags to represent every single man, woman, and child that was forced into these camps. The tags would rotate very slowly, and then sometimes you can hear the paper rustling. So it's almost like the spirits of all these people were speaking to us. Eight of the camps were in the desert. Two of them were in the swamps of Arkansas. A well-known painter, Chiru Obata, went to the authorities and he said, you take people out of their daily lives and you put them in this one square mile, 10,000 people in a square mile, they're gonna go crazy. Let me start an arts program. He managed to talk artists into teaching classes. And if you had a skill, people would say, could you teach me how to do this? These were not professional artists. They were farmers and fishermen. I knew that all of my family had been in the camps, but my parents never talked about it. The community never talked about it. So I really didn't know what this was all about until I happened to discover this bird pin that my mother had in the garage. And I just liked it. I thought it was a nice piece of jewelry, so I started wearing it. And one day somebody asked me where I got the pin and I said, oh, you know, I think it was made in camp. And I thought, you know, what else was made in camp? Two of the camps, Tule Lake in Northern California and Topaz in Utah were over ancient seabeds. People did earrings, table ornaments made out of shells that they picked up. Mm -hmm. 
These groups would get together and they'd do it as a little club. People didn't just make floral pins. They were very fond of the Disney characters. They use fingernail polish and other types of poster paint to decorate the characters. People would make memory books and had their friends write inscriptions. This one is carved and it's decorated. In all of the camps, people made bird pins. They used fruit crates for material. They got their hands on a National Geographic issue on birds. And they tried to be as authentic as possible in how they carved it and how they painted it. I started thinking about why this was so meaningful. It was because the objects reflected the dignity of the people who were in camp. When you saw these amazing things that they created out of nothing, there was a respect for their unwillingness to just give up and give in. What I really came to admire about them was that they were looking for beauty in a place where other people wouldn't see that. What the people who were in camp said to me was, it was just our way to come on. And gaman is a word that means to bear the seemingly unbearable with patience and dignity. They'd say, we had to come on. What else could we do? We had to come on. My mother is Momo Nagano. She was 15 when she went into camp in Manzanar. They were hiring the incarcerated Japanese Americans to create camouflage for the war effort. There was nothing to do, so she wanted to have a job. They would create a piece of camouflage by weaving strips through netting. She said it always stayed with her because she just really enjoyed the process. She did ultimately become a weaver. I found this picture taken by Dorothea Lang and their five women, but one is standing there just kind of focusing in on what she's doing. I swear it's my mother. There's just something about the way she's standing there and the way she's really working on the weaving part. Many Japanese Americans had parents who did not talk about the internment experience. It was a, a source of great shame and humiliation and embarrassment. Um, but our mother <laughs> spoke very freely about it. And we were hearing stories about camp from when we were, you know, very little. My mother was willing to walk her own path through this life. And her approach to life was really reflected in her artwork. The flag is woven with strips of cloth through a netting that she created. She collected the names of every family that lived in her neighborhood and put them on the stripes. In the blue field, it's all the camp names. And 30th Street was her street that she lived on in Los Angeles. The shape is a tombstone to symbolize the death of her neighborhood. For centuries, Asian Americans have been faced with this questioning of their Americanness. Because you have this face, you are the perpetual foreigner, even though your family may have been here for five, six generations. One of the great ironies of the internment experience is that Many of these Japanese Americans never lost their love for their country. You know, they loved the United States from behind barbed wire. Our parents made the best out of a bad situation. And they didn't talk about it, not just because it was hard for them, 
but they wanted to spare us children. They wanted us to grow up loving this country. They realized that that silence was not meant to harm us, but to, to um, protect us.